Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is good. All the time, our God is good. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all. It has been long. Hallelujah. And happy Easter to every one of you, wherever you are watching from. Happy Easter to you. Happy Reservation Day. Revelation week. My prayer as God the Lord has risen. So shall everything that is dead in your life, in our life, be resurrected in the name of Jesus. God bless you for joining. God bless you for turning in. Hallelujah. Without much ado, we are going to go straight to the business of today. Hallelujah. Because the master business inquire east 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 hallelujah praise the lord so before we go to the topic of today let's just say a word of prayer a word of prayer hallelujah you are highly lifted up and there is no one like you hallelujah you because today is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the privilege to bring us together tonight again. Thank you Lord for this wonderful moment you have designed that you have created. Thank you because I know we are going to be blessed tonight again by your word in the name of Jesus. Because it is written that the entrance of the world giveth light and understanding to the simple. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your word proceed forth, Lord, let your word bring forth light. Light unto our spirit, light unto our soul, light unto our body, in the name of Jesus. And let it circulate round over our homes, our family, our loved ones, and our world in the name of Jesus. Let your word, O oh Lord, eliminate every darkness in our hearts, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to hear your word tonight. And thank you, Lord, for the privilege to speak your word tonight. We pray as men that will be hearing, O Lord, from different angles, from different corners, from different places, Lord. We pray that your word will comfort with healing, with deliverance in the name of Jesus. That your word will cause breakthrough, encouragement, strength in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified, be magnified. Be that praise tonight. Blessed be your name. Glory unto your name for this privilege. And we sanctify all we are going to speak tonight with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray that your name alone will be glorified after this meeting. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening once again. From this side is evening. So I, know, I don't know what time you are or where you, wherever you're watching from. From here, I'm saying good evening to you all. Hallelujah. Tonight, we are going to talk about a wonderful topic, which I titled, which we, we have heard several times, talking about prayer. 
Hallelujah. We are going to talk about prayer tonight. We are going to talk about prayer. Because prayer is one of the tools to communicate with God. It's one of the special tools to communicate with God. And we should understand that not everybody, not everybody, not everyone, not every God can answer prayer. Not everyone can answer prayer. If we really need our prayer to be answered. Hallelujah. Not everyone that answers prayer. If we really need our prayer to be answered. And there is only one that can answer prayer. Only one. And that one person is God. The God Almighty. The King of Glory. The Lord of Lord. The God, the Creator of the Universe. The Creator of Heaven and Earth. is the only one that can answer prayer. And you know that every religion, every religion believes in prayer. If we, I will shock you, even the wishes are wizards, they also believe in prayer. Hallelujah. Everyone believes in prayer. Because I say, everyone believes in prayer, a prayer because it's a, it's, a, it's a medium of communicating with the divine. Prayer is a medium of communicating with the divine. So every religion, everyone believes in prayer. It doesn't matter how they pray. But there's only one that answers prayer. If you see the book of the book of Psalm 65, Psalm 65, Shalabrate Kalupa Taba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified, dear Lord. Be lifted up. Psalm 65, verse 2. The Bible says, O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Unto thee shall all flesh come. O thou that hearest prayer. It's only God that can hear prayer. It's only God Almighty that can answer prayer. Hallelujah. That's why we need to be encouraged to pray. To pray to this God because He's the only one that can answer prayer. He's the only one that hears prayers and He's the only one that can answer prayer. Hallelujah. Every other God are mammy gods. Every other God are works of men. Every other God, they have eyes they cannot see, they have ears they cannot hear. This God we are talking about is the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, with whom nothing is created, in whom all things were created. Hallelujah. So, O oh, Dad, I hear prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Who are you praying to? Who do you direct your prayer to? Hallelujah. But that is not what we are going to talk about today. Because I'm going to be talking to the believers, to the Christians. And I want to encourage every one of us to keep on praying. Sometimes we find it difficult to pray. Sometimes we find it hard to pray. Sometimes we find it challenging to pray. But I want to tell you that that moment of challenge, that moment when it is hard to pray, that moment when it is difficult to pray, that is the perfect time to pray. That is the wonderful time to pray. Hallelujah. The book of Luke chapter 18 encourages us, encourages us, the word of Jesus, book 18, Luke 18, Luke 18, Luke chapter 18, hallelujah. Shalabrata, Rati Shabadurata, Luke chapter 18. I will read from verse 1 to 4. 
he said, and he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men, he didn't say the leaders of the church, he didn't say the bishop, whatever, he didn't call the high positions, he said, men, as long you are a man, you are entrusted to pray. You are entrusted to pray. Hallelujah. So men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2, he said, saying, there was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, and that regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Verse 4, the last. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said with himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. When you study further, you will see that the man which regarded not God, which fear not God, nor regard man, later hid to that woman request because of her persistence. So we need to be persistent in our prayer. That's what the book of First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. I think First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seventeen. That we should pray without season. We should pray without season. Let me be sure. First Thessalonians chapter five. Verse 17 or 16, verse 17. That we should pray with at season. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that we should pray more all through the day, continuously, month, week to week, day, from 24 hours in a day, from 24 hours to seven days in a week. No. Four weeks in a month. No. 30, 30, 31 days in a month. No, no, no. He's talking on the persistence. That's what Jesus was telling us in the book of Luke chapter 18. The persistence. We need to be persistent. We need to have that strength to pray. We need to be pray continually. Pray continually. Pray with accuracy. Be persistent in your prayer. Because God's answer prayer. Hallelujah. So quickly, I'm going to tell us what prayer can do or why we must pray. I'm going to tell us why we must pray. Reason we must pray. If you study from that Luke chapter 18 that I read before, Luke chapter 18 verse 1 and you move further from verse from one to to eight nine, you see how the woman would be the woman request was being made by a judge who, who fear not God nor regard man because the woman keep on coming, keep on coming, even when the judge refused to answer, she keep on coming, she keep on coming, hallelujah. And he just said to himself, no, I have to do something. So this woman will wear me not. Hallelujah. So your prayer, when you pray, when you pray, when you are persistent in your prayer, something happens. Something you can hardly imagine. Something that you can never imagine happens. That's why I'm going to tell us that we need to be encouraged to pray, especially in this our dispensation of time. We need to be encouraged to pray. Prayer is one of the one of the two or the dimension or, or one of the platform to communicate with God. One of the platform to communicate with God. Hallelujah.
So in that Bible passage I read again, Luke chapter 18, Jesus here was teaching us the power of prayer. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, I'm going to quickly talk why we must pray. Or why, or the reason we must pray. Hallelujah. The reason we must pray. The reason we must pray. Because when you pray, when you pray, God is going to fight your battle. Arranging things in your favor. Making a way even when there seems to be no way. When you pray, God will fight your battle. Arranging things in your favor. Hallelujah. Making way even when there seems to be no way. We need to be encouraged. Why must we pray? We must pray until situation changes. If you are tired of your situation, or you are tired of the situation of your nation, you are tired of the situation of your family, you must pray. Hallelujah. Because when you pray, situation changes. Believe me, situation change. Because miracles happen every day. So we must keep on praying. We must be persistent in prayer. Prayer is one of the tools to produce miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you need to pray to God, He stands up for you. Ha ha ha. Allah. When you need to pray to God, He stands up for you. And when He stands up for you, when, when He stands up for you, no one can be against you. The Bible says, when God is, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Why must we pray? Why must we pray? The things you are wanting and praying for may be closer than you think. So that's why we must pray and continue praying. Hallelujah. Because the thing you are praying for might be closer than you think. So we must be persistent in our prayer. No, we must not just pray, but be persistent in our prayer. According to the book of Luke chapter 18. Hallelujah. Why must we pray? If God can turn night into day, then he can turn our bodies. He can turn your bodies to blessing. He can turn your pain to gain. He can turn your sorrow to joy. He can turn your failure to success. Hmm. It can take away that that garment of ashes and put on you the garment of beauty. Hallelujah. So if God can turn a night to day, so God can turn whatever situation. That's why we must pray. We must pray because it's the only one that answers prayer. Hallelujah. Why must we pray? Because God is the best listener. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is the best listener. And He cares so much for you and I. You might think, ah, oh, I just committed sin. God cares for you. Still. The Bible said, why, why yet we are, why we are still sinner and Christ died for us? While we are still dwelling in sin, still living in sin, still swimming, dancing in sin, Christ died for us to show you how much God loves you. God hates sin, but He loves you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, there's more reason we must pray. God 
is a wonderful listener and he cares much about you. Why must you pray? Because it is okay. It is okay to pray for exactly what you want. It is okay to pray for exactly what you want. Hmm. What you want. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So what you want, you why? That is one that reason. You must pray. Why must we pray? Why must we be consistent in our prayer? Why must we be persistent in praying? We must pray strong in prayer. We must stay strong in prayer. No matter how many times or how many ups and downs we go through. We must all stay strong, be persistent in prayer. In prayer, no matter how many times or how many ups and go, uh, how many ups and downs we go through. So we must pray. Prayer keep us strong. Prayer keep us strong. Hallelujah. Why must we pray? When we pray, things change. Doors are open and possibility become reality. Possibilities become what? Reality. Ay, 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 ay. Mm. I love the story of Joshua. When he attacked the enemies and the sun was going down. And when the sun goes down, it, the enemy might escape. And he prayed unto God. That God should make the sun to stand still higher. And the sun stood still. He stood still until Joshua destroyed the enemies of Israel. Joshua prayed that the sun should stand still. And the sun stood still till Joshua destroyed the enemies. So possibility becomes reality when you pray. When you pray, hallelujah. Why must we pray? When life is hard, pray. When things look difficult, we must pray. When life is great, we must pray. Mm. Because there is no time for us to stop praying. Why must we pray? We must we must keep praying for our family because they need it. Our family need our prayers. Our loved ones need our prayers. Our government need our prayers. Our leaders need our prayers. There are so much reason to pray. There are so much reason to pray. But when you pray and work with God, you will always reach your destination. Mm. Because one little prayer can change that situation that you is going through, that your brother is going through, that your family is going through, that nations are going through. Hallelujah. God opened us that you don't even knock out when you pray. Look at the story of Job. The Bible says when Job prayed for his friends, God turns his situation around. God bless him more than what he had before. When after he prayed for his friends. So when you pray, God opened doors that you didn't even knock at. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So pray first, then decide. Why must we pray? Because there are so much confusions in the world. So much confusion. Sometimes it is hard for us to decide. So we must pray before we decide. Why must we pray? We must pray before we decide. Because there are so there are a lot for us to decide on. That comes our way day and night. So we must pray before any decision. 
is taken. Hallelujah. Why must we pray? Why must we pray? We must always pray to have eyes that see the best. Because the world we are in, oh my God, the world we are today is getting even worse and worse. So we must pray to have eyes that see the best. Because there's so much, a lot of deceivers. We must pray to have eyes that see the best. A heart that forgives the worst. A mind that forgets the bad. And a, and a soul that never lost faith. So we must be persistent in our prayer. In our prayer. Hallelujah. Quickly before I round up. Let me just run down some eleven things that prayer can do. We can never imagine what prayer can do. But I just draw down some eleven things that prayer can do. One, when you pray, prayer, your prayer can protect us. Your prayer can protect you. Your prayer can protect me. Your prayer can protect nation. Your prayer can protect your family when you pray. So it is very vital, very important, very essential for us to pray. See what the book of James chapter 5, James chapter 5, verse 16, I think. James chapter 5, verse 16. See what the Bible tells us. James chapter 5, verse 16. Hallelujah. Shale bratata. James chapter 5, verse 16. He say, confess your fault one to another. And pray for one another that ye may be healed. So prayer can also cause healing, can also make one to be healed. But that is not where I'm going. The people say the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You don't know what that means. Ah, oh, yeah. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me read. Let me read that from the book, from the translation of the New Living Bible. Living Bible, hallelujah. James chapter 5, verse 16. Hallelujah. James chapter 5, verse 16. Ah, shalabra, ta, ta, ta. So... You reign, you ancient are your king. Kadosh, Kadosh. Hallelujah. James chapter 5, verse 16, from the Living Bible translation, I read it. It says, Admit your fault one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and wonderful result. Ha 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 ha. My God, the prayer, the earnest, earnest, persistent prayer of a righteous man, of a righteous man has, has great power and wonderful and produce wonderful results. <laughs> my God, you can see, my God, I see mind blowing. The scripture cannot lie. Our prayer produce produce wonderful results. Has great power. So your prayer protects you. Your prayer protects family. Your prayer protects your even your neighbors. What prayer can do? Prayer change things. When we pray, things change. When we pray, things turn around. When we pray, the impossibility become possible. Prayer changes things. What can prayer do? Prayer keeps you in the will of God. Prayer keeps you in the will of God. Hallelujah. What can prayer do? Prayer draws you closer to God. Because it's a platform to communicate with God. 
That's why I so much love the man Elijah. The Bible tells us in that James chapter 5, if you read further to verse 17, he said, Elijah was a complete human as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall nor fare for the next three and a half years, then he prayed again, this time that it would rain down and it poured and the grass turned green and the garden began to grow again hallelujah hallelujah this is a man like you and i he prayed that it would it, it would not rain on the earth for three and a half years and there was no rain just a man and he prayed again that she rained and the op- and the heaven opened up and there was rain heavily heavily hallelujah so prayer draw you closer to god it's a it's a platform where we can communicate with our maker with our king with our lord that's why when you study the life of jesus it's all he always find himself praying Sometimes you just go uh, throughout the night and say, okay, let me go and pray. Before you know, he prayed all through the night, all through the night, all through the night. You will come across that in the scripture. Hallelujah. All through the night. It's a platform that will communicate to God. And prayer draw us closer to God. Hallelujah. Why? What can prayer do? Prayer makes you happy. Hallelujah. Prayer gives you joy. When you pray, maybe some sadness, some bad news just come and you pray. It gives you joy. It brings joy to your spirit. Anytime you pass it through one difficulty or the other, when I pray, it's like something left me. That sorrow, that pain, just go. And joy just comes from nowhere. Hallelujah. The spirit of joy, the spirit of God, bring joy in me when any time I pray. What can prayer do? Prayer make you selfless. Prayer make you selfless. Hmm. What can prayer do because of time? Prayer heals you from pain. Prayer heals you for pain. What can prayer do? Prayer makes you stronger spiritually. Prayer makes you stronger spiritually. So we must engage ourselves in prayer because it makes us stronger spiritually. What can prayer do? Number nine, prayer gives you peace. Prayer gives you peace. Hmm. The last but not the least, what can prayer do? Prayer gives you direction. When you need direction, pray. Prayer gives you direction. It keeps you in the track of God. It keeps you in the direction of God. Prayer gives you direction. When we lack direction, that's when we need to pray. Because prayer gives us direction. Hallelujah. There are so much. There are so much to talk about in prayer. Please, I want to encourage us not to faint in prayer. The Bible says, when you fail in a time of adversary, your strength is small. I pray you will not fail because your strength is going to grow bigger and bigger. Because it's a day that wait upon the Lord shall renew that strength waiting on the lord in prayer in prayer shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wing as eagle and they shall run and not weary see the bible says they walk and not faint so we must wait upon the lord in prayer it doesn't matter the situation if you want to change your situation around for good go down your knees and pray because they say, God, 
in heaven that answer prayer. And it's waiting for you to pray now. It's waiting for I to pray. Hallelujah. That's all tonight. I believe with time we are going to talk more on prayer. We are going to be talking more on prayer. I'm, I myself, we're going to be talking more on prayer. Praise the Lord. Because of time, I'm going to end it here. Next time we'll meet, we'll continue from where we stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you for joining. Happy Christopher. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Brother Richmond. God bless you. I can see you, sir. God bless you for joining. You're welcome, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. So that's all we are going to take tonight. Before we call it tonight, let's just say a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just want to bless your name. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for your word again that have come to encourage us, that have come to renew us, that have come to strengthen us. Help us to pray, not to lose heart in the name of Jesus. Help us to be persistent in our prayer. Help us to be strong in our prayer. Thank you for encouraging us tonight. Father, we say be glorified, be magnified, be glorified, be praised in the name of Jesus. Daddy, as we are living here, we are not leaving your presence. Father, let your presence go with us. Remain with us in the name of Jesus till we meet again. And may your name be praised in the life of everyone that is watching it tonight. And may your name be praised in the life of everyone that is going to watch the video later on. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night, rest, and have a wonderful day wherever you're watching from and a glorious week ahead. We may bless till we meet again. God bless you.